Hey y'all. Hey, welcome to the home today. Uh, it's been a little while since I've been on here and I don't know if you remember or not, but about a year and a half ago, I mentioned that we were going carnivore and yeah, we've cheated a little here and there and the last month or so we've cheated a lot. But anyway, up until that time before we got to really cheating a lot, you know, I uh, did pretty good. I've lost like 35 pounds, maybe a little more. I don't know what the wife's lost. I can't even find her. She kind of, you know, got under a pile of dust or something. She lost so much weight I can't find her. But anyway, um, the process of all that, you know, we used to uh, grow a lot of our food in the garden and stuff. And we still grow a garden because some of it's copacetic with what we're doing. And and what we don't do with that, we can give away and, and we can sell some and trade some and like that. But I've been doing a lot of homemade jerky and snack sticks and stuff like that. And that helps a lot because, man, you know, you get snacky in the middle of the day. And, my gosh, you know, you can't eat, can't grab a fruit, piece of fruit. You can't, uh, you know, go get a cookie or a piece of candy. Well, lately I have been, but I put about five pounds back on. But anyway, not supposed to do that, but it's really handy. And we tried, you know, summer sausage. And you got to stick a summer sausage in there. You go cut a piece off of it. And, but it kind of, after a while, that kind of all tastes the same, you know. And you got the hassle of going and cutting it off, which ain't much of a hassle. But when you're as lazy as I am, you know, uh, I mean, whatever it is. So, But this here, you know, got them just nice snack size. Uh, my wife will just eat one of these for breakfast. That's her whole breakfast, you know. And easy to make, cheap to make. You know, I, you look at, I was looking at, at jerky and snack sticks the other day. And, and jerky is like $15 a pound in the store. And snack sticks can be even more. And... Oh, sorry about that. I had a little trouble with my uh, speaker cord. I forgot to turn it on. <laughs> anyway, we're just going to go off the speaker and the phone for now and, and uh, call it good. But uh, anyway, it, su suffice it to say that uh, it's worth doing to make some of this stuff. And not only that, but i got to make a batch today because I, I, I made a mistake and told my grandkids out in Montana that I'm making it. Well, I didn't tell them. My wife told them. The grandpa was making jerky and snack sticks and they're like, send us some, um, you know, well, okay, I'll get some more hamburger. I'll send them some stuff. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, all this time, what I was doing all this to tell you that Christmas came early at our house. Now I'm going to turn this around in just a minute. Hang on. Okay, got her turned around here. Now, what I've been making all this stuff with, or doing all my grinding with, is this old antique right here. Now, I don't know exactly how old this is, but I was born in 53. And I'm pretty sure this is about a year older than I am. And it's this tiny little thing, you know, and and the blades are tired and worn and dull and it took a long time and a lot of pushing to get that stuff through there. So guess what? My wife decided to bless me and she said, you need a better grinder. You need to go and get yourself something for Christmas. So, hey, here it is. Now I did a lot of shopping online, did a lot of looking, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of research and, um, I looked at on on uh, Amazon and Walmart and uh, eBay both. They got a lot of uh, off-brand stuff, and I mean everything's made in China, so you can't just I mean you can't just lump it all together as Chinese. Some some's good and some's not. But anyway, a lot of them don't tell you how much power they really have. They'll tell you how many watts. They don't tell you what size they are, and the cheaper ones especially. You can get some for sixty, seventy, eighty bucks. But they don't tell you how big, how much horsepower it's got. They don't tell you what size the the the, the, the grind capacity is, you know, and, and stuff like that. And LEM seems to be L E M seems to be a pretty, uh, what's the word? Uh, they seem to anyway. They seem to be pretty predictable in their quality and stuff. So I got to look and I said, man, I'd really like to have one of them. Our farm store sells LEM. Um, Man, I'd like to have one of them. They were like 150 bucks, you know. And I'm like, man, I don't have that kind of money. And I got to looking, and 
I actually found this one on eBay and it is a uh, refurbished model not just refurbished by a seller but it's factory refurbished by Lem. If you look on, on their system, um, some of their items, especially electrical and electronic items, there, there's different levels of certificate of uh, re refurbishment. And certified refurbished, that's the first one, is actually refurbished by the original manufacturer. So it's something that somebody returned for some reason, bought it and didn't like it, bought it and it was too small. Maybe it had a, uh, maybe something didn't work right on it when they got it. Anyway, they send it back to the factory. The factory goes through and completely redoes it, makes sure everything's working, makes sure everything's clean. And I got this puppy for about 50 bucks less than the one, than the store here locally. And it's got a two year warranty, one year from Lem and a year from eBay. So anyway, that's, I think that's what I call a pretty good deal. Now I can also, you can also um, get them through uh, Amazon and I'm still working on a on a uh, affiliate link for eBay. I'll try to get that done and get it listed down below so you can get this one here and save yourself some money. I think I paid I paid less than a hundred bucks for it. Um, and then I also put the in case you don't want a refurbished one. Some people don't trust that, and I don't blame you. If you want a new one, I'll put the Amazon link down there, and you can you can find it from there. But anytime you cl click on any any Amazon link on, on my on my site. And if you go in there and if you buy anything on Amazon in the next 24 hours, I'll get a little commission for it. And it works the same way with eBay once I get that set up. So anyway, um, it's a good deal for me. It's a good deal for you. And I'm going to open this puppy up and see what we got, okay? Hang on, i got to put you on the tripod. Okay, here we are. I'm going to turn this baby around. I'm going to do un an unboxing here. Show you what, how it came, what all comes with it. Um, here, you guys can snack on that while you're waiting if you want. But anyway, um, first thing I noticed right off the top here is a little plastic coupling. It's a little drive coupling, a little gear that comes, actually comes, a, it's an extra drive gear. This is probably the only piece of plastic in the thing. Um, it's a drive coupler, and I think, uh, knowing machinery as I do over the years, they probably made this plastic intentionally. So that if there's a big jam up or, you know, you hit a bone or something like that, it'll break this little coupling instead of causing damage in the motor or, or tearing up the grinder itself. So that's a good deal. And they give you an extra one just in case. Okay. Next thing we got in here is we got styrofoam. They ain't afraid to put styrofoam in stuff. Okay. Throw that off the side. Everything's out of there. First thing that comes out is the uh, meat pan, uh, aluminum. It looks like extruded aluminum. Now your main, your main grinder assembly is all cast aluminum. It's a good heavy outfit. My old antique grinder that I had over there, this was all plastic. The only thing that was steel was the cutter and the plate. Everything else was plastic. It's got, it's got a cast aluminum screw or auger. This is where your coupler goes on that we talked about. It's, hold, it's held on there with a Phillips screw. So if that ever breaks, take the Phillips screw out and replace it. You're good to go. This is a little neoprene washer. Um, it's, it's, it's made for primarily to be a seal, I think, to keep the uh, goop from coming back into the motor. But also, it's, it's got a little bit of a sponginess to it. So I think it's probably also to kind of uh, cushion the uh, system here in case you get your, your uh, holder too tight. But anyway, as you can see, it's a good solid body. Heavy metal auger. This thing is... Blades go out. I know when you first, if, you, if, you, if you've never messed with a food grinder before, the first thing you want to do is put the blades in backwards, but the blades come with a sharp side out so it can come against this. Now, I read in the instructions, <laughs> that's something I don't do very often, but anyway, in the instructions it said it's a good idea to marry that blade with this 
plate. So I assume they're saying um, that it's a good idea to have a separate blade with each plate and keep them together. But even if you got to do it with just the two plates, that, that's by the way, it comes with two plates. But even if you just use the same blade with the two plates, the main thing is don't go moving it around from one cutter or one uh, grinder to another because these kind of wear in. And if it gets off a little bit, it can make it uh, less efficient in the cutting and grinding. So anyway, we're going to put this in there and your ring goes on easy. Don't have to, don't have to hog it down tight. Just, just finger tight is all you need. And uh, next thing that comes out is the meat stomper. When you got her put together, you're going to want to just, just feed it down. Don't ever put enough pressure on there. You know, don't try to force it through the grinder. Just uh, That's just to push it down into where the auger can catch it and pull it forward. But here's the trick about this stomper is it's also a storage container. There's your other uh, plate. Again, the two plates, this one's a fine plate and of course the coarse plate or medium plate. And uh, some, some meats you got to do coarse and then go to fine afterwards. It comes with a sausage stuffing tube for big sausages and uh, for that you leave out the leave out the plate and the cutter all together and you just put this in in place of them. Make sure you get your pin lined up. That goes on there and that way it'll just push the meat right out through. You're not trying to grind it again. This goes on there and you're good to stuff some good to stuff some casings. Okay. I'm gonna lay that all aside. And I'm gonna get out the main oh the main event here. There we go. Now, when I talked about the difference between some of these, um, there's a lot of different things that I looked at on them. And uh, and I'm going to edit that out because I don't remember what I was going to say. So when you get to here, cut it. Okay. Here's the main body of the thing. You've got your on-off switch over here. And it's got a reverse switch, which is a good deal because sometimes you get a big lump of something in there or something wants to just to be too hard to grind. Or even when you get to a place where you got to stop and there's still some meat down in the, the body of the thing, you can just pulse backwards and it'll release that pressure and get everything cleaned out easier. So that's a good deal. And uh, over here you've got a... I'm going to put this back together so I can stick it on there and show you a little more about it. I did actually take this apart last night and washed everything. So it's all clean and good to go. We get done going over the high points here. I'm going to grind a little bit of meat just to show you how it works. Okay, this comes in. You have to wiggle it a little bit to line up your splines on your drive and then click it over and she's ready to go. You got this little button right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's to release it so you can take it off again. Okay. And that's what she looks like when it's ready for battle. So we're going to stop it right here. I'm going to go get some pork that I got in the fridge and, uh, See if we can get her to grind. I haven't tried it out yet. I haven't even plugged it in yet. So we'll go on. We'll go on that little adventure here in a minute. Be right back. Okay, we're back. Now, one of the reasons I decided to go with the lamb, that's what I started to tell you a while ago, was because if you go on their website, they have their own website. You can go on there and they've got accessories. They've got parts. And actually the manual that comes with it, it's got a parts diagram and parts list in here 
for absolutely every part that's in the thing. You can even buy a new motor and put in it if you want to. Anything goes bad, it's fixable, okay? Um, so it's it's not just that they, whether or not they stand behind the thing, you can get parts for it. If you decide you want a finer blade here or uh, plate, you can get a finer plate. If you need a new blade, you can get a new blade. It's pretty awesome. So anyway, I got some pork here. Uh, the cord, I had, <laughs> had to look for the cord there while we were off camera. It's actually in a cavity up in here. You have to pull it out. So I found that and we got her up here ready to go. When it's plugged in and got power, you got a blue light on. That's your on off. Your reverse is just a... Reverse is just a pulse. Now, one thing you should do, and I forgot, and I'm not going to do it now, is you should take a little bit of... Uh, spray lube and or spray <laughs> spray lube yeah wd-40 no don't use wd-40 uh take a little bit of uh, spray olive oil or something and lightly coat the inside of the thing just to get it some lubrication before your pork gets through to it this pork i cut up it's actually uh parts of uh sirloin chops um they got some fat in them they're actually pretty frozen right now so we're going to see how they go Wow, I almost can't keep up with it. Wow, <laughs> that would have taken me 20 minutes with my old antique. That's awesome. Nice, fine grind. Never had to push down. There's a couple of times I got a chunk of it crossways in there, so it kind of bridged up in the, in the throat, and I had to just push that down to the auger. But once the auger gets a hold of it, it's going through. That's awesome, guys. I'm going to call this good for now hey if it, if this is uh if you if you like this if you're in the market for one of these check my check down below in my description i'll try to put a uh, an affiliate link in there and uh if this was helpful for you if you got some good information from it then like it hey subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time uh bring in later on when i'm making some good stuff with it okay i'm gonna make bologna today but I'm, this is my first time so i'm I'm going to do that by myself. I'll bring you in later for another, another try. So God bless you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.